Good morning. So uh, here we are out at the hangar and it's uh, April 8th and we have to do some maintenance on this aircraft. So we have a 1968 Cessna 180. This is the one I was flew up to Alaska and it's got a leak and at least the right fuel tank. So uh, we've gone to the manufacturer of rubberized fuel cells, They're quite famous brand around here, I guess. Uh, there aren't too many companies that do this, but uh, right here we got a box that cost about uh, a little shy of $3,000. And uh, what we're gonna do is replace the fuel cells in both the left and the right wing of this 1968 Cessna 1A logbooks. The uh, fuel tanks were replaced in 1978. So the airplanes in 1968 and 10 years later they replaced both fuel tanks because they were leaking. So the current set of fuel tanks has made it 45 years. That's a long time. So that's uh, my dad used to say that's cost effective. So now we're going to rip into it. It's time to go ahead and change these things out. So I'll try to chronicle that as we go along. So uh, if you're interested, watch that. Uh, please uh, continue to watch. I hope you're having a great day. God bless. So a 1968 Cessna 180. Got about 5,000 hours on it now. No, I don't have the fat tires. No, I will never put the fat tires on it. I'm more of a efficiency and I like to get somewhere when I go cross country. So this is Snyder Speed Kit. It basically gets you about one knot per thousand dollars. So when I look at the gauges and see my true airspeed at 150 knots, I'm quite pleased with that. All right, this is the wing we're going into, into the right wing. And uh, typically we have, uh, not typically, but we fill it up here and the fuel expands and it comes out at the low point back uh, along the fuselage, all the way at the back of the uh, fuel, fuel bay. All right, so we're gonna fix that. This has gotta come off. We got a lot of work to do and I'll try to chronicle that as we go along, in the meantime, just a quick look around the airplane. Uh, kept up with the paint. It was painted in 2011. Came from uh, the factory. Cessna bought some registration numbers. That's uh, just one of them. This is 1805-1955. At the top up there, I think it's a, a Wheeling Orion 360. Well, what a great change from the, the original uh, tail beacon. There's a stinger down there. All the tires are standard size, certified with sixes and eights on the mains. I've got eights on mine. Part of the Snyder Speed Kit right here is that fairing. All right. Original aircraft came without a baggage door, but that was soon uh, remedied with follow-on models. See the top of the wings up there? Got Monarch fuel caps on, those are great. Great way to go. It gets rid of those leaky factory, uh, factory fuel caps. Panel's been redone two years ago. Got a six pack on the left. Autopilot control head is down the right of the bottom right of the pilot's panel. Center stack is an Aero 660 for an MFD. Below that is a comm panel. Then we have our 430 WAS, the radio that came with this airplane in 2005 when I bought it, a, a thin line, uh, it's an ICOM, ICOM. And at the bottom of that, uh, three iterations later, we have a GTX 345 and all the uh, engine instruments and gauges are put over there on the right side. Those headsets, new carpet. Interior's been reworked just to clean and hopefully, not hopefully, but 
clean and straight 180 from 1968. And now I've got some work to do to make it whole again. Okay, and just got the uh, wing root fairing removed uh, on the bottom part. And so you can see inside there. So where, what are signs that there's been a leak in there? Oh yeah, here we go. That's uh, leaking fuel and leaking fuel. fuel transmitter scat tube for ventilation it's right there black all right let's dig a little further On top of the uh, top of the right wing there's two access panels up here one there one here. Now these are Monarch fuel caps and these are attached to the opening through these. And then the fuel cell itself is attached to this cap by those. Alright, so now We'll get this thing unscrewed and we can get this uh, access panel off. Here we are, inside panel here. Attachment screws were kind of painted over. And that's what it looks like. And I thought I had the fuel down pretty low, but I can still see plenty of it in here. So we're starting to uh, defuel the airplane in, in earnest now, but got some signs here of leakage. There's the gasket that goes on it. So we will continue. Okay, more fun. We're out here. Strut meets the, the wing. We need Disconnect this bad boy. So we've got to go up into there. And so, there you go. It goes into the tank like that. And what does that look like on the inside? Well, we have interesting Let's see if I can get a picture of this. There it is. So that's the vent. That uh, should take a little bit of pressure before it releases and allows fuel to come out. But of course, that's how you pressurize your tanks to get them to feed. All right, up, up in the wing here, right here. The forward edge of the tank on the inboard side, and there's the bulkhead right in here. Oh, joy of joys! There is the fuel sensor installation in the tank. Of course, that's all got to come out. That green line probably is the ground wire, and back here in the back is the the other fuel connection so we're getting there yeah Cessna tried to do some things to make these tanks feed the same and what I want to show you is this vent tube that runs up here Right now I can't find it, so there's that tube right there. Okay, so there's the vent, the red, the red around it, and this thing here is a 
balance tube and you can see how it's hooked to the top of the uh, tank. I'm wondering if those are clips. So uh, slowly but surely the novice will uh, will figure this out. Okay, this is the uh, crossover vent line. That's the inboard side there. Uh, hand in here, grab this in, pull it out of the boss and then there's clips about every foot along this thing. And so this in here, you can see it's designed to go in the boss. It's got a ridge on it. And uh, the other end, designed to be holy. And uh, allow the two vents to equalize, I assume, or, or transfer fuel in high fuel situations. Uh, there always seems to be an imbalance though whenever you get down. Of course, pilots turn to the left all the time, so you find out your right tank is low. Especially when you're up in Idaho and you're shopping around on a mountain strip looking for all the clues you need before you go landing. There we go, crossover vent out. We progress. Biggest challenge, well, I got several. So I disconnected jubilee clips that some people call them that from the fuel and that's a forward one and what we got here is a scat tube going back to this vent inside and what have we got here oh yeah the headliner look at that ain't that gonna be fun so right that that's that's uh, conveniently over the top of that uh, fuel sensor if you look on the inside, oh yeah, Cessna put a nice little cut out there, but they also run scat tube and a couple of wires through their lines, and I don't even know what that is yet, but I'll figure okay, it out. Okay, step, uh, step 12-8, Foxtrot. Remove clamps attaching crossover vent line to fuel cells and work vent line out of cell being removed. An aircraft equipped with long range cells remove vent extension tube from inside cell. Vent extension tube is attached to the crossover and vent bars on the cell. All right, well, we want to do that, don't we? We certainly want to comply, so. Uh, all right, so the crossover vent is, so is where? Ah, yeah, it's up there. Behind the scat tube, right here, which is about as brittle as can be. And I'm gonna get further in the rabbit hole here. Out comes the scat tube. I guess I'll have to replace it later. All right, scat tube's gotta go. So I've cut into the scat tube right here and, and uh, Be some, you know, maybe I guess you wouldn't be surprised at what's coming out of here. This is old and very brittle. So maybe I, yeah, I'm not going to patch it. I'm going to replace the whole thing. Oh, well, it'll be fun. Okay. Uh, so once you get this thing all disconnected, you pull it inboard and what you got to do next is work the float out of here without damaging it so I'm gonna have to put down the camera to do that and use both hands but that's what it looks like when it comes out of course the floats attached to that uh, that wire going in the tank. Let me work on getting that out. Okay. Sits in the fuel cell like that. On the other side is the float. And you can see it can go up and down. And that little sucker I think 
I can send out to get recalibrated. The tank was showing a uh, quarter or less on the gauge. And uh, of course these things are not notoriously inaccurate. So uh, I'm not sure if my money's gonna be well spent by sending it to, to have it calibrated or repaired or overhauled. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, I see up here, there's where the, I think it's called crossover vent or something like that is located. So I get the Jubilee clip off of that and then uh, peel back the boss off of that tube and uh, on the path of discovery, see what's behind that door. Anyway, okay, I'm showing the, uh, one of the uh, many clips that hold up the top of the tank to the undersurface of the top skin of the wings. Uh, and the way you get these things out of here, slip your hand along here and then pull straight down. Last light and everything else went away. So there's the clip. Okay, uh, prior job experience is, is uh, always handy. Having somebody who's done this before you is a great thing. This right here, disconnecting. It's, it's hard for that to focus. That's the vent tube going in to the uh, to the boss on the outboard top corner fuel vent. And I turned the tube back in here. There's an old ratty piece. So, so yeah, there's a transition for you. So there, this is on the inside of the fuel tank. That goes through the, the boss on that corner. And then of course that's all gummed up with Hose, excuse my shaking. All gummed up with hose that you use to connect the outside vent to the vent that goes in the tank. So, and this is replaceable if it's not working right. I'm gonna inspect it here and see how it looks. But uh, that was an hour job just getting that out of there. Okay, note to self. Don't do this again. So here's where the uh, drain goes in. It's uh, two screws are out and the drain has been screwed out. It's a Safe Air dash uh, 32, which is an improvement over stock. Now we're up here and this fuel boss here holding the fuel line here, the aft fuel line. And I'm trying to move this tank out of this corner from an access hole that is up in the front. Well, you know, about a third of the way back. The forward bulkhead is, is my, my fingers are bouncing against it. And the back one is, is back here and back there at the bottom of course is the aft fuel pickoff now the forward fuel pickoff I was able to pull the tank away the tank uh, boss on that line I was able to pull that away because I have mechanical advantage on it but one thing I don't have is mechanical advantage through that access panel with my little puny fingers to pull this out of that fuel pick off. So what am I going to have to do? Oh yeah, it's connected inside there. All I have to do is spend more time on this airplane. Start taking the headliner out. Update. So, started disassembling the airplane. I was trying to get to the, uh, the B nuts back right here that have uh, connections for the fuel. And that fuel probe, it goes in right there. All right, so. 
piece of the fuel boss still left. So I was gonna take that apart on the inside here and uh, pull that tube out through the uh, headline, where the headliner is. And so I started taking the headliner out and you can see I've already chipped up all the paint on that rail. So good for me, good for me. Now I've got a headliner that's partly disassembled and I quit. I quit because it was just too frustrating. And down here, there's a spring that goes in there. It sits on this thing here, little bitty thing. And when I pulled, pulled that off so I could get this vent cover off, which I still, you know, this, this headliner is kind of glued to it. So I still can't get in there without going in further. And I'm, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done ripping the airplane up just so I can have to repair it. So anyway, now we're missing a spring. It uh, could be inside the cabin here. It's just a little bitty old thing. Well, fits right, it fits right in there, so you know it's small. You see it there, or guess what? The hangar floor. So anyway, uh, that that back aft fuel boss wasn't coming out. So guess what I did? Yeah, you're probably way ahead of me. I said, why am I tearing my airplane apart to take out a leaky fuel tank? I'm not a professional. I'll get the tank out. And then I started cutting into it. So I cut it into little pieces all over the floor. All I have left to salvage out of this is the clips. The clips that hold this thing in place. So I'll be, I'm not sure they come in the, a new kit or not so I'll be salvaging these clips out of here and uh, reusing those and the date of manufacture January 1976 that was a pretty darn good tank so you see the fuel bosses that come out away from me is the uh, fuselage side of the tank this is the outboard wing side of the tank it's pretty rectangular to me I thought there was a indentation in there somewhere but uh, I've got so torn up maybe I can't even recognize the indentation but uh, anyway that's the vent on the outboard side I cut the inboard uh, access panel out and that was stationary this outboard one here is where where the uh, Monarch fuel cap was. I'm trying to. I don't know where, where the leak came from, but something was starting to give way because it was leaking. That's pretty dry out there where this side down here is a little wetter. I don't know if that means anything or not. A little sticky right here. This is the inboard side, and there's a forward fuel takeoff there's the F fuel takeoff bus that was one giving me so much trouble and uh, right up here is where the is where the uh, crossover vent goes and I'm not sure where that sucker ended up oh here it is that's the top left corner of that tank and it goes just like that okay so frustration set in utility knife came out the uh, fuel tank is out I'm gonna go look inside the bay now inspect that okay it's important that you put some tape around this edge here so when you're in here working you're not gonna kill yourself or <laughs> Come out of here looking like if the cat bites. So you can see back in the back there is a hole. In fact, you can see the screen for the fuel pickoff. That's uh, a Cessna provided item. And over here, same thing. There's the screen. It goes. It goes on there. Now I'm looking down here, and you know, 
I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. The tape looks pretty damn good. This was done 45 years ago. So whoever did this job did pretty good. I've got a few sections where, where I might uh, fix it. But, uh, that's a forward bulkhead over to the fuel pickoff in the corner. And uh, interesting enough, the bottom skin's been zinc chromated. And uh, see the forward bulkhead all along this wing is, is just uh, raw aluminum. Tape job's pretty good. I'm not sure about up on top. But uh, yeah, I'm going to clean it out a little bit. Hands are shaking. I'm sorry. I just, it's hot. And uh, what am I looking at here? Uh, yeah, that's, is that a clip right there? I'm not sure. Clip anchor. But anyway, my hands are shaking because uh, it's hot out here in Arizona. And I'm sure I'm out of salt. So I gotta clean up this bay a little bit and then tape, retape a few areas. But overall, I think I'm gonna go with the, leaving as much of the original tape in as possible. Uh, I left off giving you a tour around the airplane. And uh, I said uh, that the tanks originally, the original tanks were replaced in 1978. So get back in the log books. And uh, I found out this fact. 628, 1978, 1683 hours installed new fuel bladder in right wing. Here's the part number. And uh, interesting. 12000653-3. And I'm going to put in a 12000653-4E. Interesting. I'm always up to learn new stuff. And this is installed new fuel bladder in the left wing, part number 120065-4. Interesting. Uh, okay. There you go. So uh, the, the, the part numbers are confusing to me. This is, it's got to go in the right uh, wing or the right bulkhead. There's the fuel drain. And there's the, the low rear pickoff in the fuel. There's the high pickoff in the fuel. There's the vent tube that goes there, runs out to the end, all the way, extended range tanks. And there is the uh, vent tube for the vent. And all the hardware that goes with it, we're about ready to put it in the airplane. As soon as I get one more inspection. Video? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, uh, at this point here, I got my man uh, Spike over here supervising me and he came up with a great suggestion. This is very pliable. It's very easy to roll up. And so imagine the tank sitting here, right side up, correctly configured, and we just roll, roll the whole thing up. We stole, we put one end through, it's already in the, in the, the tank compartment. And it goes up against the wing, uh, the fuselage bulkhead. Maneuver toward the nip nipples and the holes. And well, that's where we're at right now. And as you can see how easy this thing is, since it's so supple. Yeah, I think you tuck it in. To come down through the holes. Now, so getting it in the compartment, pretty easy. Now we have to unfold it and uh, line it up with the nipples. So, and that's the way that works. You can go ahead and kill that. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and push it through if you can. I'm wiggling this tube. Is that top nipple coming through? 
Yep. Yeah. Is it through now? It's through. Needs to go a little further. That's where all it is going. Will that pipe come over to it? You don't have enough to clamp on. You have to go a lot further. There you go. A little bit more. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. You're working at the fuel house. I was talking about the vent tube at the top. Oh, okay. So, that tube at the top. You see that one? Yep, go ahead and maneuver it. Keep going. Keep going. Here, you're in, just keep going. Well, that should be there. Yeah, you need a little bit more. You're on it by about a quarter of an inch. You need to go at least half an inch. Okay, here's another fact of life on this uh, fuel cell replacement. What you're going to have to do is make some guide bolts. Because that's the only way you're going to get this up and hold it to the, uh, the plate. This is called an adapter ring. There's three of them. There's one on the uh, fuel sender, which is right there. And we had to do the same thing. Guide bolts on it, then put on uh, the, the gasket on the uh, bladder side of the bulkhead, then put on a gasket on the aircraft side of the bulkhead, and then uh, thread the uh, fuel sender through. Without these guide bolts, you, you just can't, you can't uh, accomplish the job. So a little tip, tip for you, those are AN4s. Uh, hex heads, I don't know, two and a half inches or something. And the heads are cut off and then uh, beveled on the grinder wheel. Okay, so we'll get busy and put on this uh, this access panel on the inboard side. All right, so here's how the guide bolts work. I've, I had three of them in here, which I think is about the right number. And the gaskets uh, on the other side, it's in place. Uh, nothing goes on the gasket according to the instructions. Uh, both in the maintenance manual and from uh, Eagle fuel cells. So you get, use these to pull the adapter plate up with the gasket on top. You pull it up and then you can start the screw. Once you get that threaded and then get another one, then you can get a third one going and uh, there you go. Once you got those in, there's no reason to keep the guide bolts around anymore. There's your guide bolt and it's uh, back in the back on the workbench and ready to to work on uh, the three other access panels. So there you go. This job went fairly easily, and I appreciate that. Okay. Good morning, sports fans. So uh, I thought I'd wrap this thing up and get a conclusion to it. Uh, I'm not done yet. Uh, Today is April 22nd, and I start on April 8th. Now, I haven't been working straight through this thing, obviously. I've been taking breaks. Uh, some of the breaks have been caused by parts availability. You'd be surprised how you can't find scap tubing, one-inch scap tubing. Stuff like that just uh, frustrates the heck out of you. Plus, I was learning as I, I was uh, doing the job, and, and that's a slow process. Uh, I figured it would be slow. I didn't realize it would be this slow as I was waiting for parts. So I want to conclude this and uh, get it on the wire in case there's some other poor soul out there who is uh, who's doing a fuel tank replacement. Uh, so let me give you my conclusions. At this point, it's just a matter of putting the aircraft back together. I've got uh, the vent tube. Uh, connect the vent tube to the... Uh, uh, on the outer fuel tank, the outboard to the under wing vent. Got to do that. Then uh, using those guide bolts again, I got to put the refueling cap on on the uh, outer access panel. Uh, I got to replace the scat tubing for the passenger ventilation, and, and that's been a real uh, bugger to find uh, find that scat tubing uh, availability. I finally tracked some down at uh, McFarland, and that, that's in the mail right now. 
have to zip tie the fuel sender, electrical feed to the scat tube and the other wires that are running in the in the wing root have to secure them. Uh, I need to replace the wing root fairing, replace the, uh, put the headliner back in, I have to fuel up the tanks and of course check for leaks. If you're going to, uh, to do most of the work, make sure you comply with the FARs. Uh, find someone on the field, uh, preferably an AMP who's done this before to assist you and supervise your work. And then when you're all done, uh, as you as you progress through this, different stages, tank removal, inspect the fuel bay, tape up the fuel bay, uh, put in the tank, connect the leads, have, the, have your AMP come over and uh, inspect, uh, kind of a keep a checklist and sign it off as you go. And at the very end, he needs to make a logbook entry. Right now, the lead time for new fuel cells from the Eagle for this airplane is about three to four months. So uh, while you are waiting for the fuel cells to arrive, you need to get the new hardware, uh, scat tubing, make guide bolts, talk to the others who've uh, done the work and follow good advice. If you made it to, uh, to, uh, to the end of this uh, video, uh, you must have a leaky fuel tank and I, and I feel for you. Uh, but, uh, you know, your airplane will be whole again when you get her done. It just, it just takes a while. Uh, sorry, uh, for your, uh, your struggles, your trials, but uh, I hope this video prepares you for the work ahead. Uh, as always, fly safe and uh, God bless. Take care. <music>